Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ace Blazer, and I'm going to show you guys two replays. Yeah, and you know what? They're going to be the two new DLC factions. No, <laughs> two of them are going to have the DLC factions. I'm playing as Roxolani, and I'm playing with pa uh, Paul and Olaf, who are, are friends of mine from YouTube. Anyways, I'm, probably, I'm sure you've probably seen them in my videos. Um, we're playing a little right game. We actually, hang on, let me just quickly check this, yeah, yeah, we're good. So, <clears throat> this is me, I'm on the right side, and it's going to be kind of hard to figure out who's who because we're all the same faction, but keep note that I'm yellow and they are blue, so we're, <laughs> what are you doing? I think Paul is in the middle, or I don't remember where he is, one of them, this is me, and my opponents are Pontus, who has formed himself a little noob. Boxy thingy and Macadon shield bears. Well, no, no, not shield bears. Hoplites there, shield bears there. No, well, royal pair of test. Sorry, and a whole lot of Aspis companion for the Epirus guys. And this guy was prepared for our build. See, lots of cavalry here, a little bit of pikemen. Very good build for anti cav. Anyways, um, geez, what was I talking about now? New DLC factions. Oh yeah, we're playing a game. Um, it makes it very fun for us. We're going down the list of factions. Um, all of us. Well, Paul and Paul and uh, Olaf, also known as Pinks, by the way. They were playing the game already before I joined them, and they were at the Roxolani already. So yeah, joined them in the Roxolani, and here we are. I've got myself mostly armored horse archers. I believe those are the best um, cost effectiveness uh, type of dealio. Step Horse Archers, they have like you know the same kind of missiles, but no armor. So in a missile fight, I believe this extra armor does help out just a bit. That's just because like against these, okay, these are Pontic Royal Cavs, they're pretty decent. But these are Scythian Horse Archers, which are exactly the same as my Step Horse Archers, basically. Now they don't have Cantabrian Circle, which doesn't really matter to me to be honest. In a battle <coughs> that flows around as much as this one does. Um, it's really hard to use Cantabrian Circle. Really, you'd only use it when your enemy is stationary. Like if I was trying to deal with a, a noob circle kind of thing, but in this kind of a fight, it's really hard to use, in my opinion. So yeah, he's playing a little bit of a cat and mouse game here, which is what the skirmishing fights usually turn out to be. Um, let's see, four Sarmatian Royal Lancers here, and... I think I've got like eight Sarmatian Lancers. <laughs> Six or eight, and then like eight, well, uh, eight armored uh, hard post archers, which are pretty decent. So he's gonna actually take a huge gamble here, try to take up my horse archers, and uh, I'm gonna charge his guys, counter charge. He's really, really far away from his line, though. I think if he really wanted to support his guys, he should have brought his slingers up. Those guys can deal a lot of damage against me. Now over here, I didn't really fight with these guys, so I have no idea what's going on. But you can see the Epirus guy. Basically charging his, I think he's like charging his guys in one by one. It looks like I don't really know what happens here, but definitely lots of horse archers everywhere. If this were Rome Total War, oh man, it'd be a very different. Uh, we'd be like, what the heck? Why all these horse archers? Oh my god! But <laughs> this th this faction, Roxolani, they have no no infantry, so it's not really anything you can say or do. All right. Um, yeah, got some flanking troops to try to take out the Pontic Royal Cav over here. Let's take a little close-up of everything. Uh, you can tell it's definitely lagging just a bit. Look at these guys and their horns. When I first saw them, I was like, reindeer horses, sweet! Anyways. Uh, yeah, trying to take out this uh, melee cavalry, which my guys are doing because I simply just overwhelmed them like crazy. Um, charging them from behind. I have a lot more melee cavalry than them. He's finally bringing in some melee infantry, but all the while I'm shooting him with the heavy shot. The heavy shot is, I guess, to simulate, I don't know, heavier arrows or whatever. You know, people, uh, they would have uh, different type of bows for different uses, and I guess that you could simulate heavier arrow arrows to do more damage against armor. Now, I've got some units here in Cantabrian Circle trying to deal with his archers, I mean, I'll start slingers. And over here, I've got some of my horse archers to help out with the fight can see that they're really, really Riders, piling it on my allies. Aspis Companion Cavalry, very, very good, very effective. Companion Cavalry, also very effective. And uh, this guy, whoever this is, only has Lancers, so definitely a problem. Now, since, uh, you know, you really have to try to conserve your ammo quite well, 
especially against if you're gonna have to be fighting infantry later. So I would recommend turning off fire at will. But that's just me. And yeah, here's the next opportunity to take out his the enemy general. I I'm my camera's just flying around the map because I don't know where to where to commit my camera to guys. Like it's so much is happening and especially in a 3v3 battle. But yeah, I've got my horse archers here to support, and I have just about managed to route the Pontic Royal Cav. Yeah, you see my general kind of got stuck in here. He decided to charge a hoplite here from behind, so that was fine. And we beat the Royal Cav. That was a major point. Oh yeah, his general attacked my horse archers. But I simply just let him let, sacrifice one unit of horse archers and heavy shotted him down to just uh, 12 guys, and they're wavering right now. He still got a lot of uh, Scythian mercenaries, which is a problem. He's got some hoplites here. Let's see how much this does. Ooh, yeah. You see, he's. It looks like he's shooting a lot of missiles at me, but I actually don't lose. I'm really surprised how well my my armored horse archers could sustain against uh, missiles. It was really impressive, I thought. Whereas his guys are dying like crazy. I think his guys are gonna start wavering pretty soon. In fact, I think, I, I, I don't know, something happens here. You can see when you have the little curve thing here, a little arc, it's a little easier. And over here, I'm charging into some javelin men while I'm shooting stuff. So I'm just trying to help out just a bit here, because I, I want to make sure I'm helping out the team. And yeah, see, already some one of his units are starting to waver and route. I think I've actually had a unit of horse archers route. Well, quite a few, actually, but, you know... The thing about nomadic factions, and you'll find this if you if you ever play the campaign. Sorry, I'm speaking really fast. There's so much to say. If you ever play the campaign for the nomad nomads, I actually played about maybe 50 to 60 turns, just enough to take over most of the steps and expand into the Caucasus, which would be like um, Samaria slash Bosphorus area. Um, nomads are like <laughs> Soviet Russia. I mean. It's a pure numbers game. You just gotta keep on recruiting, 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 recruiting. And uh, that's all you can really do. And it's the same for this one. You have so many horse archers, so many things to shoot with. You just gotta rely on your numbers. That's all you can really do. And it, it's different, actually. It's really interesting, because I'm used to armies that rely on quality, like the Greeks, the Romans, <coughs> even the barbarians. Like, I was never really into the num numbers game. It was really always about quality troops. So it was a it was a change of pace. I, I kinda wish that they uh, made it a bit more fun. They could have done some things to make it more interesting on the campaign. For instance maybe horde mode like in Barbarian Invasion. Uh, you can see how much damage I've done to this world protest all by myself with heavy shot. That's 111 men down. Just from shooting them from behind and with heavy shots. There were six guys dead there. Very effective heavy shot. And our our enemies you see the Pontic guys being very, very uh, kind of stationary. That's the problem with forming these kind of formations. Is you, I, we find that when you play a nomadic faction and you play a guy that's inexperienced, they just simply freeze. <laughs> they don't know what to do, and they, they form up new boxes on like the first first go. Um, over here, we're having a little bit of a cannon mouse going over. We're trying to take out. They're trying to take out the cavalry. I think most of the cavalry is actually dead, and I was unfortunately not able to show that. Here I take out a lot of missiles. And the Macedonian general. Down to 69 men. That is ridiculous. This was a real mistake here, setting up his general by himself. And that should give me the opportunity to actually surround and kill this general. Yeah, it looks like the Macedonians. And, uh, yeah, they really threw away their general. <laughs> threw away a lot of stuff. I think, I don't know, maybe they're overconfident with their heavy cavalry, who knows, but here's, he's still got a bit of companion cavalry over there, and I'm just trying to form up here, trying to get away from all these slingers, quite a few. But around this time we're com communicating, let's squish these guys, let's squish these guys in, so I oblige, throw my guys in there. Meanwhile, there's a lot of royal peltas there, Empress is just about dead, it's still got a pikeman unit, so yeah. And I try to get them out away from all these guys, and this is when the rain of death starts hailing down on my guys. All these slingers, they kill a lot. But as I said before, it's a numbers game. Oh, I think around this area, yeah, I'm going to try to take out some horse archers here. Because I figured 
you know, try to split out your forces so you don't all get hit by missiles. And while I'm on the way, may as well go for these Scythian Horse Archers. Alright. And yep, yeah, this time they're, they figure, oh yeah, we're screwed. Look at all these guys. Look at all these Horse Archers. I've still got I've still got a fair amount of horses. Not, not a, Definitely not as much as I had before, but... Uh, taking out the bulk of his Horse Archers. I still have plenty of units. Not a lot, they're very small numbers. This one's on this. Oh, 63 out of 80 actually is not bad. What is this one? 13 to 80, yeah. 30 to 80, 52 80. And over here it's 29. So uh, yeah, I've taken really huge losses, but I'm surprised my guys are still around. It could be because this horde might be bolstering their forces. And yeah, I think uh, when someone sacrificed their unit to hold these guys up, and now they're getting shot with heavy shot or something anyways. Yeah, just a hail of arrows, taking them down. So this is time to do some uh, back and forth, uh, do some back and forth uh, new box action. <laughs> it's gonna fast forward just a bit. I might actually cut out a lot of the middle part, cause, and I'll show you guys the end charge, how that works out. But yeah, this kind of stuff happening in Rome Total War, we just, I'm kind of sure we would have hated it. But in Rome 2, it's apparently um, legitimate. <laughs> but you know what, it's very funny to deal with. Nomadic armies, they value initiative. And it's very funny to deal with people that don't know how to take initiative, don't know how to attack, usually they're more defensive, and if you are an attacking general, your nomadic uh, gameplay, it uh, it benefits you, it really does. I'm sure that a really good, like a decent, somewhat decent person could actually beat these nomadic generals quite easily, but so far we haven't come across too many people that use these. Uh, most uh, most uh, used one is definitely the Mesicate. A little bug here. I'm trying to go for the general that I shot down to like eight guys, but uh, they're going for these hoplites, which I don't want to happen. Still a bit finicky, this uh, these horse archers. But yeah, there's still a bit of ammo from my allies, Paul and Olaf, 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 stuff. <laughs> so raise the banners and all that. I don't know why this royal peltast. They don't form up with the Pontic guys, they're kind of out there by themselves. Very impatient, I guess. And that's another thing, if you can be too impatient, or too patient, like Pontus, I think he was too patient with his army, too timid, whereas the Macedonians, they're so impatient, they threw away all their cavalry, threw away their general. Epirus is nowhere to be seen anymore because they were so impatient. Right. So yeah, just surrounding this army, and uh... You know what? I'm actually got, uh, yeah, 25 guys left. Still not routing though, still good. And I'm gonna actually skip ahead to when we charge in. Glorious last charge. Oh man. That was devastating. And that is how you beat a noob box. You, you get units all over the place. Because, you know, these foot archers, they have to turn. Whereas we get a 360 degree firing circle on these guys. You can see. Yeah, there you go. So, when these guys have to turn, you can unload a whole volley into them, just absolutely destroy them, and route the guys inside. And then you can start working on the infantry. So, yeah, I'm gonna skip ahead just a bit, and yeah, catch you on the other side. And we are back. So, we just destroyed all the missiles. For some odd reason, the Pontic guy decided to form Shield Wall, um, which would have been fine, except it opened up a lot of gaps in his formation. And I decided to take advantage of this gap, because it also makes his guys very immobile. I'm going to go to go ahead and charge this unit of hoplites. And that's another thing. These infantry are are decent, but not the best. They're only regular hoplites. Um, the only unit I could see being a threat is these pikemen. It's Epirus. He's got one unit left, but they are slowly being picked down. I'm seeing the chance here. Maybe we can route these pikemen and cause maybe a chain route. But I'm going to try to go ahead and use my my reindeer horses here and charge in charge he does turn his guys in time cause many guys to fall over 
and he's gonna actually turn some troops over and deal with my horse charge. Only one unit. I'm fine with sacrificing my units at the moment now. And I was thinking about trying to get into this gap here, but uh, oh, and then his pikeman goes. That opens up a huge, even more of a gap. I'm gonna go ahead and try to charge into the back of these guys who are engaging my horses. Right, let's slow mo this. Glorious charge! Wabam! <laughs> on skates he is and then he starts stumbling over and it's just a sea of people yeah this is where the the, the charge starts to me. see he's starting to bring in all of his guys I pull off the raise the banner here this is this is really really you know he didn't have to, like, the Macedonian didn't have to come engage me. He should have covered the back of the Pontic guy. Although he did route a couple of my Lancers, I did lose quite a few guys there. But it succeeded in blobbing up his guys, giving... I think it helps with the, the missiles. If anything, though, it, it definitely screwed up his formation. So now he's just one big blob ready for us to attack. So, shooting fire missiles here trying to lower their morale and I think we start the charge it's only a minute left in this replay but yeah really screwing up formations now note that fire arrows unlike previous total war games they do not do more damage anymore they are useful for morale decrease uh, making elephants run amok there we go Let's charge making elephants run amok and making buildings go on fire charge Glorious. Absolutely glorious. <laughs> Sorry. And he's... I don't know. The best way to combat cavalry is to uh, brace your infantry. When you keep moving your infantry around, they're not going to brace for that charge. And they're going to take a lot of... Uh, sorry, a lot of uh, casualties from the charge. So they're fully engaged and... Um, I think we've got them on the run, yeah. These guys, even though they're hoplites, I mean... You can't keep moving them around like that. <laughs> you gotta form a bracing kind of formation, defensive formation. And that routes a lot of them. They just can't handle it. And you'd be surprised actually how many good units would route to this kind of attack. That's the end of this replay. In the middle there. Oh yeah. Cool. Alright, let's load up another one. Second skirmish battle. It's gonna be with... Let's see... Yeah up. Well, Scythia versus Seleucid. Well, really kind of a balanced uh, army.